Hey guys, it's V here. Let me start by saying I do not own the rights to the music in the background. Um, today I will be doing a peekaboo tutorial, a honeycomb. Um, and I'm super excited about this one because it's one of my favorite cups to make. Um, so let's get started. I have a 24 ounce hog from Stainless Steel Depot. This one comes with a plastic like a rubber bottom, so I will not focus on the bottom today. To get started, we need Mod Podge. I put it in a container because I get the gallon size. It keeps it fresh. Alcohol to wipe after I sand the cup because I will not put a base coat on this. And I get this glitter from Glitter Chimps, and it's called Honeycomb. Love it. Okay, let's get started. I just lightly sand the cup. It doesn't really matter what kind of paper you use, what kind of sandpaper you use. paper towel. A lot of people like to use um, coffee filters because they do not leave the lint behind, but since this is just to get the, I don't know why I tilted it, it's a push one. It's just to get the extra sanding junk off. And then I'm going to dry it. I do not use a paper towel after the epoxy is on it. I do use a, a coffee roll, a coffee filter. Mmm, coffee roll. I must be hungry. Um, coffee filter. But to each their own. Coffee filters do not leave lint behind. Okay. To start, I like to use Mod Podge to get the glitter on the cup. Put a generous amount because this is going to be a thick layer of glitter. Make sure it's smooth. You don't want any clumps. This is a Mod Podge brush that I got from Michaels. After I'm done using the brush, I like to sit it in water. Um, to keep it from hardening. I just leave it in the water, honestly. Every now and then I'll clean the water, but that's what I do. Let's get this off the top. And Mod Podge dries really fast. So you wanna work quickly. You do not want to see the silver at all. You want it to cover the whole entire cup. Okay, I'm gonna put this back into water. Well, where it will sit until I use it again. Let's get that out of the way. Let's get that out of the way. And I am going to add paper underneath so I can collect my glitter after it falls. This is the most beautiful glitter I have literally ever seen. And that says a lot because I literally have glitter from every single company out there. This is my favorite for the honeybee or the beehive, whatever. It's called so many things. I like this. I don't do the base on this one because I like the way the silver looks underneath. Plus most of it will be covered up anyways. I'm a super messy crafter. Take it or leave it. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, just look at that sparkle. You cannot find a sparkle like that anywhere. Believe me, I've looked when it comes to the honeybee. This is my favorite glitter. I've tried a few different kinds. This is my favorite glitter for the honeybee, I should say. It's the only glitter I actually buy from them. Okay. Now I'm going to... And I like to use a huge piece of paper because I'm super messy. And I like to pour it back in to the container. This comes already in a container, labeled. Awesome. Then I like to lay the glitter down because it makes it easier to epoxy. And less sanding after the epoxy is on. This is one of those cups that you may very well have to sand after after um, epoxying it because it's a chunky glitter just lightly tap the pieces down a lot will fall off and that's okay How can you not love this glitter? Let me see. Look at that. I want to do a wall with this. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, and very expensive, so... You can't find this shine anywhere else. This is literally the only company I've ever gotten it from. So, I'm just going by what I know to each their own, right? And just lay down the ones that are pop popped up. As it rolls, they pop back up. Eventually, laying them all down. If there's chunks anywhere that have super a thick layer you just kind of pat it out and they fall off as they go only the bottom layer will stay the one that's mod punched this is such a great peekaboo it's one of my favorites because you don't need to have a lot of it seeping through showing because it's so bright and full of color that you don't need to show a lot through the honeycomb. Okay. I am going to recycle this. Actually, reuse this. This one I'm making for a teacher. Okay, so I'm going to put you on pause and let this dry. I have a fan right here. Got it from Walmart. I like to put it right on the table, at the edge of the table, and face it. And just turn it on, let it dry. I do this with spray paint, 
um, I do this with pretty much anything that's Mod Podged. So what happens is it will blow off the extra ones, and then as it's turning, the ones that aren't laid down flat will fall off. So I'm going to let this turn for a minute and then I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I'm going to measure out some epoxy. Part A. What I'm going to do today is I'm just going to fill up the cup. So that is two tablespoons. I'm going to dump it into this cup. Make sure to scrape the edges, get it off the bottom. And then I will fill it up with part B. I use fox frizzle, bow frizzle. There's an X in there and it always confuses me. Um, fill it up again. Two. Two tablespoons. Perfect. Um, the reason I'm mixing so much is because I'm going to flood coat it. That just means that I'm going to put a lot on. Okay, it's still a little wet. I still see just a little white seeping through, but we should be fine. I mean, It'll be fine by the time I'm done mixing. When mixing, you want to go in a circular motion. You do not want to go back and forth. You can, but I notice it causes more bubbles than it. Typically, you want to go super slow, but right now I'm not worried too much about bubbles because this is a peekaboo and this is my first layer of epoxy. On this type of peekaboo, you want to get this layer as smooth as possible. Um, just for the simple fact that the next layer is the finished layer. And you have to add some vinyl to it. And if the vinyl lifts because of the glitter, then that could cause issues with epoxy. Um, so after I put a good solid layer on here, I will, typically I will sand it. You want to scrape the sides. I'll move these out of the way. Put my handy dandy napkin on my lap. I usually have a a towel laying over my my lap because I don't change my clothes when crafting unless. I have somewhere to go. But usually I'm just running around with my kids. I'm a soccer coach and my son does bowling. So you don't really have to dress fancy for that kind of stuff. So yes, I have epoxy on pretty much everything. But anyone who knows me in my town knows I've been crafting all day. I probably have glitter on my face and in my hair. And my kids usually have glitter on them and... My dog always has glitter on him. A cat always, always, always has glitter on him. 
I'm gonna shut this off. Give this a break. Yeah, so starting to clear up. It's still got a little ribbons in it. I know it's an exciting watching people stir epoxy. I mean, uh, whatever I've left over from the epoxy, I like to make little gems with them for my daughter. Make necklaces and and keychains and bracelets. My son likes necklaces too, but he only wants red and I feel oh, I'm running out of red because he only wants red everything. <laughs> I know I'm using the stir wrong. This is to stir, the other ways, the other one's to scrape, but I don't understand why you would, f whatever, to each their own. I prefer to stir with that side. I think this side's cool. Kind of looks like a marble or something. To be honest, I usually use popsicle sticks for my first layer. I've, I just, but, Today I'm being fancy. Okay. Usually I'm done by now, but it's starting to look clear and good. I hope everyone had an awesome weekend. Three day weekend. It's Tuesday now when I'm recording this, so it's Tuesday morning, so that means that by the afternoon I'll be able to finish this for you guys and hopefully have it ready for you tomorrow if I can figure out how to cut and do all that fancy stuff with the video. I'll probably cut this part out. If I don't, lucky you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let's do a nice thick flood coat and take this off. We will no longer need the fan, so I'm going to place it on this little table over here. I have a bunch of portable tables that I use. Um, it just seems to work easier for me. I like to do my epoxy face on. I like the bottom of the cup. And face. Oops, there goes the fan, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's turn this back on, and hopefully you guys can see this. Make sure your gloves are good and clinging. And then, when you're dumping this on, you do not want to touch the glitter. You just want to touch the epoxy. I don't know if you understand that, but... You want it so thick that your finger literally just goes over the top of the epoxy so you don't move the glitter because this was not sealed. Just like that. And you'll have a lot that falls off. That's okay. That's why we do so much of it. You want to be super gentle. I mean, so gentle that it's like you're barely touching it. Make sure you got the whole entire cup. Like I said, I'm not going to worry about the bottom because I have a, a 
a piece of rubber that will go at the bottom that I'll just um, epoxy on with a five minute epoxy. Okay, looks good. So good. Okay. Just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. gun which fell on the floor and blow it out. Right now I'm just getting the bubbles out. Now I'm going to let this dry for four to six hours, depending on my temperature today. Um, it looks good, and I will come back and we can chat about the peekaboo next stage. I'll be back. Hi guys. Um, so I finished this it's got a layer of epoxy on it nice thick coat of epoxy it came out pretty smooth for the most part there's one part of concern but I can fix that later with another layer of epoxy um, today I will be using alcohol inks from Ranger Jim Hansen <laughs> I think that's what it's called um, this one is called Honeycomb, and this one is Dandelion. You can use any colors that you prefer. I also buy these in bulk from Amazon. I like to take the top off and use this as my sponge and this as my mixing for the epoxy. You'll also need an X-Acto knife, a pair of scissors if you just decide to use them. Um, you need uh, transfer tape. I buy this from the Dollar Tree. It's the clear liner. It's called Magic Cover. Absolutely going to need gloves. Okay, so let's get started. First, we are going to weed this. I use Oracle. This vinyl is pretty awesome. Um, Oracle 631. I buy it in bulk on Amazon. had my weeding tool. Okay, so I'm going to weave the beehive. So this one comes off of Amazon. I just removed the layers. Um, okay. You wanna cut this into sections. It's easier to apply on your cup. So let's see. Get this piece out of the way. 
We want a nice big piece. That's good. I'm running out. I hope you guys are having an awesome day today. My son's homesick. So I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. It's beautiful here in Florida today. I have my windows open for the first time all year. It's pretty amazing. It's nice and cool out. Okay, so now that I have this on, I am going to get the wrinkles out, smooth it out. best as I can. Then I will use the Zacto knife to cut sections. Hopefully I printed enough for the cup. I didn't quite measure. I pulled up a file that I had for a previous cup and I think it's the same size. So let's hope for the best. If not, then you know, you get the gist. You want to be careful not to press too hard because you do not want to cut your mat just hard enough to go through the paper. Okay. I'm going to start with the top one. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start with the bee. Let's find a good spot for the bee. The beehive. It's not the bee, obviously. Come on. Okay. Let's see, you want to find the most the smoothest spot on the cup to put the bee high. Okay. I think I'm gonna put the beehive at the bottom. You want to slowly take the paper off. There's a little bubble there, but that won't matter because after I spray paint the cup, the, the vinyl is coming off. Now, the important part is trying to line it up. Where do we start? I'm going to start on the side. I like to give a little way at the top up here so that it looks like it's not completely at the top, but it still looks kind of cool. And lay it flat, getting all the pieces down, and try to make it as even as you can. And because this cup tapers, it's a little more difficult to make the hives. Now, if it was just a straight, like a straight like this one, a skinny, then it would be easier. That's my coffee cup. It's my favorite cup. Okay. Make sure this is on there pretty good. Okay. 
you can see how there are spots that are bumpy. That's where the epoxy dipped. But that's okay because the epoxy will level out after you peel these off. I'll explain that a little bit later into the video. So I should have enough to go completely around the top. Then you want to line it up. Just like that. And this one's going to be a pain and go up towards the top. Great. So you see how this one went a little crooked? That's okay. I mean, you'll see what I mean when it's finished. That doesn't really matter. It would matter if it was a different type of cup, but this one is going to be spray painted and it's going to change the whole gist of the cup. I could actually take those off. It's slowly turning into a beehive. And then we're going to go to the bottom. You want to try to line these up with the cup also with the other beehives and it might be a little more difficult because it's smaller I'm going to start in the center and see how that goes Not bad. Okay. So this looks pretty good. Just lay, lay it down. Make sure it's nice and flat because when you do spray paint it, you don't want the spray paint bleeding underneath the vinyl. So you see the difference in size. one I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut out pieces a strip because it's like a puzzle you want to try to fit them in I haven't mastered the wrap I don't think anyone has actually I've seen lots of videos on this okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this top one To take the top one and I'm going to place it right here right there and then I'm going to cut another one it's like a little puzzle I don't know if you noticed, but this one I did, I didn't put the point up like the rest of them. That's okay. If I have another one left over, then I will change it. Okay. This 
might actually work. The beehive is one of my favorite cups for the simple fact is all the work that you put into this cup, it is absolutely worth it in the end. I mean, this cup comes out gorgeous. take this one out careful not to scrape the epoxy it's no big deal if you needed to sand yours down okay now I fit that one in I have these two I probably put no I'm gonna leave that space right there put these ones here Because if you've ever seen a beehive, it's not perfect. Let's see if I can fit this in here. Now I'm going to take these ones out. Then I'm going to add this to it. The beehive is a time consuming cup, but so worth it in the end. I mean, so worth it. add a few of these down here I hope you guys can see I love this glitter so much. It's going to look awesome. Okay, so I have this little spot right here that I will add these two. Okay, that's not going to work. Right now, I'm going to cut some out. This one wants to play around. And then I can piece them in after that.
Okay, so I'm going to try to just fill in the little empty spots. I, usually, I push down with my fingernail. Um, little bag out of the way. And I think this is pretty good. Ooh, I want to put that one on like that. Whoop. It's important to use um, removable vinyl. If you do not want permanent vinyl. You're going to kick yourself in the butt if you do. There we go. I may put one right there. Actually, maybe not. Okay, guys, so I'm going to go outside and I'm going to spray paint this and then I will be back in and we'll finish it. Looks pretty great. So excited about this one. Okay, guys, so I went outside and I spray painted my cup with a white spray paint plus primer. Um, this is a flat white. That really doesn't matter because epoxy makes everything shiny. So this is my go-to spray paint. Use it for everything. So now when you're handling the cup, you want to have gloves on so the oils and dirt and dust from your hands don't get all over it. Mostly the oils. I have oily skin and sweaty palms. Okay, so you can kind of see where there's more dips than others. I'm not really worried about that because once the epoxy's on it, it will fill in those spots. You want to handle it with care. I see, I already chipped it. I put it on the turner after I spray paint it and I put it in front of a fan to dry it faster. Okay, so now for the fun part. Let's lift you up just a little. Okay. I am going to get a paper towel. When using inks, you wanna make sure that you have just you know, clothes that are you could care less about. I will be using honeycomb and dandelion. Let's get them open. And like I said, I take the stick off. I use this for epoxy when I am using one of these. Okay. Try to take the foam off. It's just easier to use when it's just foam. So I took the plastic part off. Okay. I wonder if I bring you a little closer. Hello. There, that looks a little better. Okay. So for this, you want to just cover it basically with inks. In the beginning, it will look pretty horrible. So you just spread it out as much as you can. Lachi. I have a foam in there. So... I usually put my hand inside, but I think I'm gonna put this. Hold oh, oh, hello. <laughs> One second. Okay, so I wanted to get my arm. And you wanna make sure it's nice and blotchy. You don't want it smooth. You want it to look like a beehive, right? 
So once this dries up a little, and you can see the difference between a nice smooth spot or like a spongy spot, like not smooth, <laughs> I don't know, blotchy. Okay. So on the other side, I will use dandelion. Flip it over, see how it's a different color. And you keep blotching it, it will mix together and it will be gorgeous, I promise. I love these two colors because they more or less look like a beehive to me than any other colors. Okay, I'm gonna use more of the dandelion. And you want to layer it up. See how it separates it? And just keep flatting it over and over, layering it up, making sure to get down in the creases that are down and the dips. Let's add a little more honeycomb. Honeycomb is the darker one. And just spread it out. And as you go along, layer it up. And you don't want it to look like that. You want to mix it together. So there's no actual rings around. So there's no definition, the separation in colors. Okay. At this point, I mixed it all up so I don't know what's on here. I don't know which side of this I was using. It doesn't even matter at this point. I'm mixing it all together. Let's use some dandelion. I like to mix the dandelion on top of the darker colors, lightens it up. See when you put it on, it's kind of, I love these colors. So these are alcohol inks. Um, you get them at Michael's, Joann's, Walmart. Actually, I don't even know if they sell them at Walmart. There's lots of different kinds of alcohol ink. These ones are just my favorite ones. Tim Holton, that's the name. I'm so bad with names. I'm an in impulse buyer, so when I see something on sale, I have to have it, even if I don't ever use it. It's pretty bad, actually. I always say I will eventually use it. Okay, so this part I put mostly dandelion. Dandelion. And I'm going to layer it with 
the other one. You see? It's starting to look good. The fun part is trying to get the vinyl off. That's a good time right there. Make sure you get the whole entire cup. You don't want to leave any bare spots. And continue to go over them so you're blending. You do not want the ring. You want it blended as much as you can get it before it dries. They do tend to dry quickly. So you have to work pretty fast. What do you think, guys? I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to layer it up with the dandelion, the lighter color. And being their alcohol inks, it spreads. It spreads quickly. That's why you keep patting it. You can use whatever colors you like. I just prefer these ones. I've tried different colors. These are my favorite for the beehive, definitely. Okay, lightening this dark spots up. Going over. I'm gonna have the dark in this side up. If you have any questions about this, feel free to comment and I will answer them or you can message me. Don't ever be embarrassed to ask questions. That's what we're here for, right? Okay. All right. So that looks pretty decent. And I will find my alcohol and squirt it. Okay, so I got this little thing from Amazon. It's a little spritzer. Um, this one is by Ranger, so it's rangerinc.com. And what I like to do, oops, is spray it from a pretty good distance away. And what happens is the alcohol in here shifts the paint or the inks and makes it pretty awesome. I don't know if you can see it spreading. It kind of separates, like look right here at this spot. Separates it. Pretty awesome. Then after that, you can dab some more. See? That looks awesome. Get rid of the rings. The alcohol adds a pretty damn cool effect. I don't know if you guys can see it. Okay. So that looks pretty good to me. I am going to cap these. It'd be nice if I knew what 
path they went to. Put them off.